In this video, I'll show you why this house ends up stronger than most. And it has nothing to do with us being better carpenters. It's all about how the walls are designed and built. But what I want you to focus on as we go through this section is the fact that both of those gable walls and this wall are all balloon framed and fully sheathed. So think of the strength that this wall running perpendicular like the letter H brings to this house because it's a fully sheathed wall, here we are in earthquake country and we're building them as single pieces as opposed to like main floor, floor, second floor. So anyway, as we go through the drone footage, just keep that thought in mind. This wall that we're lifting is difficult to lift because it's pinched between the big walls, but we have to go in order of the walls that take up the most room. So it is what it is. A little bit tougher to rig, a little bit more tedious to lift and lift safely. Kyle's and my IQ combined is still only half of Jordan's. So this is like the first house that Jordan's framed and he's done most of the cutting for us. See if you can pick out what he did right cutting all of these studs. Let me zoom in to make it easy for you. What? That's right. It looks better if all the logos match. Jordan, outstanding job, buddy. Thank gold, you, sir. Gold, gold star. <laughs> Just show how stiff that is. That worked out pretty good, even though the pick points are a little bit weird. Okay, so that went really well. It is never fun to pick these walls when you have it pinched between. So we always try to push them out of plumb a little bit and off the line. Except for this guy, we wanted it to be right on the line. And that way we could just snug it tight and screw it down. So, so let me just show you on this other side, kind of what it looks like. Give you a little bit of an idea. So. Right here will be the stairway. And then you'll be able to look down from there and there's a bedroom over here, blah, blah, blah. So it's all connected up, it's all braced. We got it braced once up there on the other side. And it is nice and plumb, let's do it plumb now and then we don't have to get up there and plumb it. Look at those PWT logos. Jordan, you should have been a marketer, man. Look at that. Now, if only you'd brush your teeth in the morning, you'd be the complete package. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I think you're getting an idea of why we're balloon framing this is that all the walls, we still have a balloon framed wall there and then this guy where Jordan's at shoots across. And then we'll ledger the entire floor system. But let me tell you something about the PWT. This, this is why it's so good to use this stuff selectively. If you followed us for any length of time, you know that we will screw it down to the floor here. We'll measure out four inches and laser plumb dot all the way up. So right here, there's the screw. That was installed just like really quickly to get a brace. So we plumbed it to there. Then when we climbed up there, it was dead on the money because that guy is straight. I don't know if that makes any kind of sense. So fasten it there, fasten it there, four inches parallel. When we measure at the top, it's dead on the money because the studs, they don't curl. They're just nice and straight. All right, here is a look at the great, great wall. I didn't do that great of a job cutting if you watched that video, it was a little tough. There's the Monopoly style, so see how the zip bar comes right to the top? That will get taped then to the roof deck. That block that's on top just allowed me to have that four inch laser dot to plumb the wall up. But now as you look at all of this, we have our two story walls. It's kind of weird, the hyperlapse mode makes it look like the whole house is moving. We didn't start doing this because it's stronger. We started doing it for safety and efficiency. The strength is just a bonus. Really easy for us, we have the equipment, and to try to eliminate working at heights. So all of those overhangs, the sheathing on the second floor, the gable, this is purely a safety reason why we're doing it. We do get the added benefits of the strength. And that's why I was being a little cocky earlier. It's not because we're better. This house just lends itself to the balloon framing. Now I'm showing you this time-lapse of this front gable wall so that you can see how the wall goes in, but I'm gonna show you in more detail what it's actually like from POV footage and what our order of operations are when we get the wall set and some of that kind of stuff. And you're gonna see, we got some things right, we got some things almost right, but we had fun the whole time. All right, so what I'm doing here, notice the black lines on the floor. Remember that from a previous video on layout. 
This is basically the holy grail. This is what we want the inside face of our walls to perfectly line up with. I don't think I hit anything on that one. Because we're gonna lift a wall that's going to push against this, I want the screws down and I want this wall on the line. I haven't brought everything to the line yet because we need to build these walls and sometimes we need to kind of push things out to make room to work. This is the Cornerstone Industries truss jib. Should have bought it decades ago. We've had it for about the last five years. It's extendable. There's a sticker on the side that tells me exactly what it's rated for at those different lengths. She's locked, baby. All right, let's do this. We'll just each connect to one now and then we can choke it up. Come on. That's probably about right. All right, so here's what I'm thinking. I guess, let's just try this. It should be pretty easy to self-center. And then you just have to match my loop. This chain is fantastic. At Morton.Ben, Ben Morton out of Maine. Recommended, he's crane certified, all that good stuff. He's helped us a lot with the rigging. We have all the stamps and stickers, all that stuff. You wanna make sure that the weakest part of your assembly still has a safety factor to lift the wall. Okay. So that's what we look at at all of this stuff. Also make sure that you do the inspection pre-lift. Our nylon straps can't have any tears or nicks or a red thread showing through. There's a lot to this. Don't just do it because you watched us do it. There's a whole lot to it. And you can always ask me questions and I'll do my best to answer it. Something that you have figured out about me at this point is that I have a lot of cameras and generally will record the same thing from a thousand different angles. This was mounted up in that opening that you'll be able to look down from the stairs. And I just, I wanna show this in its entirety. Pay attention to how Kyle's operating the forklift. Because he's got the truss jib tilted up, we get height, but the center of gravity is still closer to the machine. He also has driven in and backwards to make sure that he's got nice level ground because there is a hill on the other side. This is all part of our pre-inspection or pre-lift safety walkthrough, whatever you want to call it. And every one of us is involved in that. He's certified. I'm rigging certified. I'm the lift director as the person with the experience. And we, somebody's got to be, so it is me. If, if uh, safety people come out, then they can answer. I'm the lift director. But Kyle has, he's got good touch on the controls. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute with the, um, with the POV footage. So we have it braced. For frame of reference, that is a 12 foot tripod ladder. One thing I don't want you to forget because we've done this many times. How are we supposed to get the rigging down? That is its own challenge. We can tilt that down, get it as low as we can. Kyle is just a climber, so he's just gonna climb up there and do it. I really did not want him to do this, but I have absolute confidence in Kyle not falling. I mean, the dude is a climber. I don't recommend anybody do that. Now. Here we go. This is all POV. I'm gonna to try to interject only where I need to, but really pay close attention to how smooth this all goes. That smoothness is because of Kyle's smooth operating. He's a smooth operator, baby. This is why we do one person hand signals. This is boom in, this is boom out. This is tilt down, tilt up, fork down, tilt up, fork. Can you push that side right? out even? And then my job, and this just takes practice, is how to combine all of the movements to get this thing in the right spot. Okay. So I think he's pretty close. Watch how slow this comes down. So if I'm just like this, I might even say something like nice and slow. And if you, if you have any machine operating experience, you know that just when it touches, I want to still be able to okay, adjust my corner. Are you pretty level? Okay. Can you, uh, in just a second, Jordan, can you push this way? Just put some pressure. Watch, it will push just a little, okay, not enough. 
have him go down just a little, just a little bit. So by tilting, that jib gets longer. That's gonna bias the wall this direction. I wanna pinch this corner together. Yeah, you could just hear that rigging. Hey, I could live with that. So it's down, but it's not down so tight that I can't still tap it to the line. Can you? And so it's kind of leaned a little bit, which means it's still up here. When I have him boom in, that lowers that side. It's resting, but now there's a little bit of slack in that rigging that with the screw, I can okay, pull and some of that out. Well enough for now. Because these corners were built nice and straight on the floor and because it's PWT LVL, I can put this screw in and pull it tight in the middle. Watch. <laughs> oh, I love those things. That was nice. That just takes practice. We don't always get it right. That worked out really well. Now what we're going to do is see where the ladder's at. That first row of blocking, that's our fire stop and panel edge blocking at the floor system. The one up above is at the ceiling system and then we framed our walls taller. So that means we had to insulate those before we could cover it with a ledger. That is future video. What we're going to do now is boom up to the top and we're gonna lock all of that in. And, it, and we'll see if we got it right. What do you think? Do you think we got it right? Okay, Timmy doesn't like this. I've never liked. We used to do that only for uh, cutting out door bucks, but the, the, whatever that's called, oscillating scissor. It cuts so fast. Okay, so there really wasn't any tension on that. I don't wanna climb on this. Um, I kinda think I should trim this guy up as well. I should have held those back just a hair since we weren't softening. Oh yeah. Okay, so that, yeah, there was a little bit of tension there. Big shackles that screw to the walls and it's all rated. So they might have like floor systems that are 20 some feet wide and it's just like a glue lamb and they'll just crane them in. Oh, seriously, is this thing overheated? Oh man, I don't like that. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Nice. <laughs> That's not bad, dude. I'll take that. Okay. Then I'm just going to throw one into this thing. Okay. So the only other thing is, is this 18 inch soffit. So that's just probably got some gappage that I think when we get up here to do fascia that we can figure that. So that's why this guy's long. Then we can plane the fascia through. All right, dude, you want to boom us down part way and then we'll, uh, we'll stitch up the corner. Wow, look at the size of that uh, dragonfly. Oh yeah, that one's pretty big. Like the size of a bird. Bird, bird, bird. Bird is the word. Is that that's from? Pee Wee Herman. Okay, so this would be inch and a half back. I'm just gonna mark it while he's doing that. Then I know where my nailing goes. I really gotta have just a regular carpenter. This will just help me to know to nail to that side. Nail, then we'll run the tape, then we'll nail, and we'll just drag it down with us. You like it? Kyle's got a screw in there. It took a little bit of futzing around to get that top to match. It matched really well. It is not perfect. Now I'm going at about four inch nail spacing. Notice 
They're just a little bit proud. That's what we want. The panel will swell just a little bit as it gets rain. At this point in the summertime, it's not getting rain. We're gonna go ahead and just nail and tape and work our way all the way down from the top so that we're done. With the wall up, is it gonna go anywhere? Probably not, but why not just complete each section as we go? And that way, once all the exterior walls are up, they're all locked together. Now we don't need a lot of that internal bracing. So let's just do this stuff as we go. This is just what the detail looks like on the inside. So I like to use four by six blocking. It just makes the wall stiffer. We just use some scrap LVL for double blocking on that right hand wall. Now you see how the top plates come together. We didn't bevel the inside part of these plates that you're looking at. They don't need to be. It's all gonna be hidden up in the attic. And we'll show you that as we go through the roof video. I hear you. I hear you. Landing. Nice work, Ra. Okay, I'm gonna go charge this stuff. Hey. Okay, push this tight. Come on, Timmy. You can do it. Come on, Jiminy Crickets. Okay. <laughs> oh, I can live with that, man. I can live with it. Can you live with it? I can live with it. That looks good, dude. I don't know that I need to mess with another attachment there. Okay, so the wall is zip to zip, inch and a half back. Nails! Nails! Reload! Reload! And the trick, upside down, heads down, and you spin it like a frisbee. That was terrible, but it worked. Basically, at Jordan, it's like this. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were a professional frolfer. <laughs> hey, top of the morning to you, everybody. So the wall is up. Okay, so there it is. We got footage that we'll post a little bit later. And it worked out actually pretty good. We were a half inch too high with that wall, but it was a matter of just screwing everything tight together and we got it so that now it's probably an eighth of an inch. I got the GoPro footage. I should have done something with my camera. But um, yeah. So next order of business will be this tall wall that just comes out part way. Basically this line comes through. So solid two story wall. And then the last of the two-story walls will bridge across this because it's an upstairs wall and then the dining room wall. So anyway, Cornerstone Industries basket for the win.